Okay, hi, good day. So, welcome to our recorded lecture for systems integration and architecture. I'll be discussing about middlewares for today. So, for this discussion, we will talk about the basics of middleware, why we need middleware, the message broker concepts, the messaging models, and the real-world use cases that are used whenever a middleware is implemented. Okay? So let's start from why do we need a middleware? So for example, uh, in a given situation wherein you have three applications and you would want to integrate them. So if you could still remember in our previous discussion, when you say integrate, it means that you provide connection or you make them interconnected with each other. So for this example, we have application one, application two, and application three. So for this one, uh, this case scenario presents that uh, each application is interconnected by a two or more pipelines, okay? Like, for example, application one is connected to application two, and it's also connected to application number three. Same goes with application two and three. They are both connected by a single pipeline. So for this one, we have three connectors to be used in order for them to be integrated with each other. Now, Imagine if we will add another two applications. So it means now the number of connections will also be uh, like there will be an addition to the number of connections that will be used in order for all of the applications to be integrated. So this kind of scenario presents complexity among applications. Diba? Like for example, application 1 needs to learn how to adapt with applications 2, 3, 4, and 5 in order for it to be interconnected with, uh, with, with and among the applications. So let's go to, or like for example, in the long run, like, uh, like uh, for example, you would say na the number of connections na 10 is still a good number, sir. But then in the long run, what if we add more applications to the scenario? Like for example, from five, we then connect another five applications to the integrated system. So it means that you will maintain 45 connections from it. Diba? So the more connections you maintain, the more it becomes complicated. And the more it becomes complicated, the more it's difficult to be maintained. Maintaining in a way na mahirap nang i-determine or i-monitor yung process ng data or yung paglabas at pasok ng information. Okay? So, these kind of scenarios are the reason why we need to know middleware. Okay? So, let's now understand the basics and then the definition of middleware. So, middleware is actually an intermediary application. It means na siya yung nagiging middleman if and ever you would want to connect one application to two or more other applications. Okay? This enables communication and data exchange between distributed applications. Uh, in uh, software development, uh, uh, what they call this one area, they call it as the software glue. It means na it holds the connection between and among other applications. So in this scenario, like for example, middleware is implemented. Like for example, yung kanina, we did not implement middleware and then all of the applications are interconnected with each other or the 10 applications, pakita ko lang yung, uh, up, yung PowerPoint. Ah. So, kanina, we connected the 10 uh, applications like manually, okay? So, it means that there are 45 connections na dapat i-maintain ng systems administration administrator. In this example na presented for middleware, we only create one single application that will connect the 10 applications. So it means na application 1 doesn't need to know the basics and the whereabouts of application 10 for it to be connected. Ibig sabihin, si middleware yung gagawa ng task na yun. Okay? So the concept behind middleware is actually the one that we discussed last time, the producer and consumers. So if you notice, pag ikaw yung producer, ibig sabihin, sa'yo nang gagaling yung data. And then, basically, in a real-life concept, pag sa'yo nang galing yung data, and then you will just send it to a receiver, automatically, the receiver will then receive it. But in the perspective of IT, di ba? 
if point to point siya, like producer to consumer, there will be possibilities or there will be complications or problems along the way. That's why in a message broker concept, okay, ito ay, this uh, message broker concept is a type of middleware concept wherein in order for the message or the data to be received by the consumer, it will be queued. Ha? Ang ibig sabihin ng queued is that uh, it will not be directly uh, it will not be directly sent to the receiver but rather it will be uh, put on queued. So ibig sabihin uh, before makakarating yung data kang consumer uh, there will be an intermediary application wherein it will be queued and it, it will be restored and then by the moment that the consumer would uh, the consumer will be available it will then have the data na na send ni producer. So yung purpose ni broker dito is that uh, sa message broker yung benefit niya or yung advantage niya is that it doesn't need na yung uh, receiving end is available. Like for example, a pr the producer sends a particular request or a data to the consumer but then the consumer is not yet online or available. The broker will be the temporary receiving end and then ibibigay lang niya if the consumer is available for retrieval. Diba? Like for example, nagsend ako ng data about student profile tapos yung office na pagsasendan ko is not yet available. So the the broker which acts as the middleware will then save it uh, kumaga, it will save it uh, temporarily and then it will send it to the destination if the destination is already online or available yan yung good thing whenever you would implement a middleware na message broker concept yung gagawin natin okay so this kind of concept is what you call asynchronous okay asynchronous okay now, we also have another messaging models. Yung kaninang pinakita ko, it's what you call the point-to-point. -point. We also have the publish and subscribe. So, kanina, si producer, you have the queue as the middleware, and then you have the consumer. So, again, yung benefit niya dito is that the, uh, the consumers or the consumer does, does not need to be online or available all the time for it to receive any data from the producer because the queue or the middleware queue will act as the temporary shelter for the data before niya i-submit kumbaga sa consumer. We also have here the publish and subscribe. So the publish and subscribe works on the concept of topics, okay? So for uh, for this one, if there will be like for example, uh, pansin nyo ba sa YouTube, di ba? If you are subscribed to a particular channel, you will be notified if and then if and when there is a new video uploaded. So, ganyan yung concept ni publish and subscribe. Now, to put this one in the middleware concept, you have three uh, entities that we need to remember. We have the publisher, which is somewhat like considered as the producer of the data. We also have the subscribers. Uh, they are the endpoints or the end destination of whatever it is being transferred from the publisher. And we have the middleware, which is the topics. Okay, so for uh, for the publisher topic subscriber na na messaging model, it means na whatever available topic that is being produced by the publisher, it will then be made available to the subscriber once or by the time or by the moment na gustong or there will be a retrieval process from the end of the subscriber. So, uh, kung sa producer, uh, kung sa producer Q consumer, there is really a destination point for the whole process sa publish and subscribe na concept is that it doesn't have an exact destination like if the subscriber is uh, is connected to umbaga yung nangyayari sa publish and subscribe is that for as long as you are still connected with the middleware anything that the publisher uh, sends will be available on your end kumbaga wala siyang particular destination point uh, whoever would want this kind of data or information can have it readily available. Pwede niyang kunin, pwede din hindi niya kunin. Okay? Again, yung pagkakaiba ni point to point and then ni publish and subscribe is that the point to point follows the idea na kinakailangan masend ito to a particular consumer endpoint. Si publish and subscribe naman is that the publisher will just send it to the middleware platform or application which runs on topics and then it will be dependent on the subscriber kung ito ba is kukunin niya or do I need this one? If not, then I will not get this one. Okay? So, wala siyang particular na 
destination point. Another also concept na that is being implemented in publish and subscribe is that whatever that is being sent by the publisher to the topic middleware will be available to the subscriber. Okay? Like lahat ng data na i- uh, ibibigay ni or if fed ni publisher sa topic middleware will become available to all of its subscribers okay uh, uh, to all of its subscribers it's because sabi ko nga kanina wala siyang particular na destination na uh, pagbibigyan okay lahat for as long as it is subscribed for as long as it's connected to the topic middleware okay so in most cases uh, you implement point to point if uh, if the system that you're creating is very particular with who will receive it and then if you are only doing uh, uh, or if, you, if you're creating a middleware for everyone like everyone should receive whatever is being published by any end user you use publish and subscribe the messaging model okay Ayan. now let's go to real world uh, case scenarios. Like for example, Shopee, di ba? So, an online shopping web app, uh, automatically, if you will, uh, what do you call this one, if you will uh, buy something, okay, buy something, you would want that the that the third-party seller who is using your app should be notified about, about the order. The customer should also be notified if their, uh, if their order is successfully placed. And of course, the third party app where in it will be used for storage so uh, in the real life concept like for example in Shopee and Lazada there is a message broker or a middleware that facilitates this process okay bakit merong merong message broker or middleware uh, with this kind of application because if the process will be handled by the main app or the online shopping web app it means na yung uh, the performance will, of the web app will be put at risk. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya, uh, it will not work properly, okay? Or it will not work uh, with, uh, like, yung performance niya will be put at risk. Like, for example, hindi niya kayang i-cater lahat ng customers who will, uh, who will visit, who will place their orders. If this process is like notifying the third party seller notifying uh, the the customer and other third party applications kung si online shopping pa yung gagawa eto marami na siyang task na gagawin okay so it will then affect the performance of the entire online shopping web app so to address that one meron tayong gagawing message broker who will handle this kind of processes para pagdating sa online shopping web app yung ginagawa lang talaga nila is that it will just present items, di ba? Singa, simple, uh, simple process or the basic process of an online shopping lang. But then the other processes should be handled by middlewares, okay? So with this kind of uh, implementation, si online shopping web app will be optimized. Ibig sabihin, yung performance niya will not be compromised. Hindi siya mag, uh, walang problem na uh, mag-a-arise in terms of performance, Okay? So, yan yung purpose ni middlewares. Okay? So, for takeaways or for summary or in a nutshell, let us remember that middleware eliminates complexity. Diba? So, complexity such as maintaining, uh, what they call this one, maintaining its connection. Diba? Anything that makes your application uh, complicated, middleware can eliminate that one. Okay? So, this one, uh, middleware... Uh, Use middleware, uh, message, message middleware for asynchronous data exchange. Okay, so th if the problem is on the availability of the receiving point, you can use message middleware. And then let's always remember that middleware follows two basic principles. We need to keep it simple. We need to keep keep it min uh, maintainable. When you say keep it simple, it means na yung lahat ng complexities na we can address or we can find solution to should be addressed by middleware. And of course, keep it maintainable in a way na pag merong mga errors, bugs, uh, the entire application or the 
interconnected applications for a particular system should not be compromised o hindi siya like the operational process bitaw of a business or a particular organization should not be affected okay keep it maintainable so if you have questions you can write it at uh, the comment section and then you can also send me a message so thank you again for uh, joining me today this is your uh, second lecture for systems integration and architecture i will post this one in your google classroom thank you so much